surge in violent crime, up 39% last year. And data shows that many juveniles are caught up in it. They make up a majority of arrests in D.C. for crimes, including robbery and carjacking. CNN's Gabe Cohen reports. Fear has been growing in the nation's capital, the result of a violent crime surge, and an alarming number of kids are caught up in it. What do they say when it comes to carjacking or robbery? What are kids saying about it? They really don't think now because all they think they know is get in the car. They don't see the impact it do to other people. They think it's not a big deal. Yeah, they think it's not a big deal. 15-year-old Eddie, not his real name, is one of the kids that mentors in D.C. are trying to keep off the streets and out of trouble. It's a lot that kids dealing with in D.C. Y'all probably just see one side of it, but it's a whole different side of it. Violent crime in D.C. rose 39% last year. Carjackings nearly doubled. The average age of those arrested, 15 years old. I meet Eddie and his friends at a courthouse where they just watched their 17-year-old friend get sentenced for attempted robbery. Yeah, was that again? Yeah, decent, yeah. Marcellus Queen brings them here to see the consequences of crime. He's been working with them as a mentor since another friend of theirs was killed. He's trying to keep things from getting worse what they call crashing out. I've been in prison with men, and they on their 10 years sitting. I did 10 years on 30 years, and they just wish that they can restart. So I, I try to like make sure they don't have to get to that point where they have to restart. You're trying to intervene before one of them ends up in the courtroom. Mm -hmm. Eddie tells me he was shot last year when he was 14. He's not in school, another pervasive problem in D.C. Do you think there's a crisis right now with kids in D.C.? Definitely. Definitely a crisis. I've never seen a nine-year-old and an eight-year-old pull arm off. I've never seen 12-year-olds do the things that they had. Last fall, a 13-year-old boy was killed while police say he was trying to carjack an off-duty federal security officer. He had nine prior charges for carjacking and robbery. Mohammed, a food delivery driver, says he won't work in D.C. anymore after a group tried to carjack him. Neighbors fought them off. Police arrested five kids as young as 13. Sometimes I cannot sleep after that time. I cannot sleep. DC's mayor declared a juvenile crime emergency, venting frustrations about the same children committing crimes again and again. People laugh at me sometimes when I say a child may be better off in a secure environment. D.C.'s council has advanced a new crime bill that could allow judges to hold kids in jail until trial when they're accused of certain serious crimes. I think the laws are too lenient. Curtis Brothers and I walked through the D.C. neighborhood where he opened fire at police as a young man. And how long were you in prison for that? Well, yeah. Now he's a violence interrupter on the same streets, tasked with maintaining a safe passage for students outside this middle school. Because of the violence. Because we, we want to make sure that the kids go to school and from school safe. When they talk about robberies and murders, they talk about it like it's a game, win or lose, you know what I'm saying? Why do you come to a middle school? Um, because that's, that's the most vulnerable age. Once they get to high school, it's, it's probably over. We sit in on a conflict resolution class for kids as young as five years old. The hope is to break the cycle. What brought you down that path? That's what happened. A lack of guidance, for real. A lack of guidance. Down the hall, we meet two boys, 16 and 17. We agree to call them Dion and Steve, both previously incarcerated for gun possession and robbery. Court mandated to work with this program, mentoring other kids on conflict resolution. A lot of people crash out because they don't have the right guys. They don't got mentors. They ain't got nobody to talk to. It's just everything is getting more fast-paced. They scroll on their phone. When they see... Uh, you did this, you stole the car, you could program the car like this, and whatever the case may be, that's more influenced on their life. I'm hungry, I don't got no clothes, my brother locked up, my mother not doing nothing for me, so let me go do this. They're among the many that say D.C. can't just arrest and prosecute its way out of this crisis, a city still experiencing hypergentrification and stark pockets of poverty, worsened by the recent weight of extreme inflation on struggling families.
and social media that's added a toxic layer to many vulnerable kids' lives. If they intervene way before it's to the point of crashing out, then it would never happen. Every single case you see, 100 days missing in school, with no food in the household. Why does it have to take something so major to, to see, oh, okay, we're failing. We're failing the kid. And the most saddest thing about it is they're willing to throw our kids away instead of fix our families. Keep going. CNN, Washington.